Hi everybody, my name is Dr. Jay Breitler from Relief Chiropractic and Family Wellness. And uh, I want to talk to you a little bit today about what a high intensity interval training, H-I-I-T, workout is. Uh, around the first of the year, everybody gets these ideas for, uh, hey, I'm going to get in shape. The reality is you don't need something like the new year, um, the coming of a baby, a, a trip to your medical doctor where he says your cholesterol is high and you've got to start moving your body again to make a new year's resolution. So the easiest, the, the easiest and best way to get your body moving towards making a new habit is there's something that you're gonna stick to. So a lot of times you can go to the gym and pay for a membership and have a trainer and that's fine, that's gonna hold you accountable. But I like these high intensity interval training workouts because you can do them at home, you can do them in your garage, you can do them with weight or without weight. You can pick an exercise that you like to do and you can do more of it. So the basics of a high intensity interval training workout I recommend starting with what's called a Tabata style, T-A-B-A-T-A, -A -A, Tabata. With the Tabata style, what it basically is, is 20 seconds of work on, and then 10 seconds off. Grab your iPhone, set a running timer, every time you hit a zero or a 30, you're, you're moving, you're doing something else. So, 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds of off, so if you started at zero, you work out to the 20 second, rest for 10 seconds at the 30, you start again. So every zero and every 30, you start again. Pick at least four basic exercises that you can do in a row. So let's say you're gonna do something easy just like air squats. So if you don't know what an air squat is, you're basically standing up and you're making sure that when you do a squat, I should have, I should have worn different pants for this today. Um, but I do my cross stitch shoes on, so that's a good thing. You wanna make sure that you're just getting an air squat and you're doing those, I don't wanna rip that much, I rip my pants. <laughs> uh, you wanna do this for 20 seconds and then just rest. Just look at your, look at your clock for 10 seconds. And if you've got like 10 of them in 20 seconds, Shoot for 11, shoot for 12. But whatever your first number is, you wanna try not to go any lower than that number. So, 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off, if you're doing air squats, and I, you, know, you can do that as many times as you want, a good number is six. So if you're doing six times of air squats, that's, that's your first round. And so then you've got three minutes of that activity going on a running clock. At the end of this, what I'd love for you you take away from this is at least 12 minutes working is the best place to start. The most ideal place is 20 minutes. So high intensity interval training between 12 and 20 minutes. It doesn't take too terribly long. Um, air squats is a great place to start because you get warmed up. Um, if you are doing air squats, just a couple, couple. Uh, you know what, let's use the new beef model for Yes. The best place to start with the squat if you're watching this from home, right there, and go ahead and give me an air squat, just drop down. And, and you want to get right to there. You see where she's at 90 degrees? And then you could, obviously she's going to fall. But uh, what I want you to see, the picture in your head, is getting to that little bit further down, there's a 90 degrees right there. If not, even a little bit beyond that. Again, we're not where it's best close to this today. But that's what high interval training air squat should look like. Okay, so you do, say, let's say, three minutes of that. Then the next thing you can do is you can just go ahead and hit just push-ups. So you can do air squats, and then maybe 20 seconds on push-ups, 10 off. 28 seconds on, 10 off. So you work through your air squats, you work through your push-ups, and then you can do just you can do whatever you want. Um, just basic jumping jacks, but do them fast. Don't just like five, six. It's not going to get it done. High interval training workout. You have to be sweating. You have to be working hard for 12, 20 minutes. So you're going to be doing jumping jacks. Well, be really moving through those jumping jacks, full range of motion. And I'm going to actually do that. So uh, that's another great one. Do you know burpees is another really, really good one to toss in a high, to a hit workout with a burpee. What you're doing is you're basically hitting the floor. Let's see if you can still see me on here. Yep, you can. Hit the floor, and then you're jumping up. You need to get your feet off the floor for a proper burpee, and you gotta make a clapping noise over your head. No clapping noise, no jumping, no rep. I'm, I'm out of shape, I'm out, I'm out of breath. Uh, so get Burpee, it's a great way to end a high interval training workout. The reason why, it's gonna get your heart rate really, really high. So, in this case, we just did air squats, uh, push-ups, jumping, jack. jumping jacks, burpees. So, the burpees, you really wanna be moving fast on those burpees. Okay, uh, what else can we do? Mountain climbers. Mountain climbers, let's not do mountain climbers because I've got bad pants on. What else we got? Uh, Squat jumps, really good idea. So you did the air squats. Let's say if I do this for a week, I want to take it to the next level. You basically, you're just doing a squat and then you're getting in the air. It's going to increase your degree of difficulty by a lot. 
In those butts and guts classes, here's another really good one. Lunges, just straight up lunges. Your, your knee has to hit the floor every time. In fact, you want to slam the floor, but you should touch every time. You get really good at those after a week, and your butt's not burning anymore, go ahead and do jumps. So, uh, lunge jumps. So what you're doing is you're jumping, and you're 20 seconds of that. You have to get both feet off the ground for pop, proper air lunge to count. I can't even think anymore. <laughs> get 20 seconds on, 10 off. Okay, so you've got really good with this 20 second, 10 Tabata routine. Now you wanna make, let's say your rep interval instead of 30 seconds, one minute. So now you can do 45 seconds of work, 15 seconds off. 45 seconds of work, 15 seconds off. Um, let's do another really good one. Two other really good ones to add to your high end interval training routine. Regular just sit-ups and regular just push-ups. If you're gonna do a push-up, a couple things to remember on a proper uh, push-up, and I'm just gonna do it here so you can see me sort of on there. I'm doing this for my knees, it's a great place to start, but you've gotta hit your chest to the floor. Your chin does not count. Your midsection does not count. It has to come all the way down, come all the way up. Get adding degrees of difficulty and scaling for yourself. If you're hitting the, uh, the workout and you're really not sweating or moving your body much, then you really wanna make sure that you scale up. So from your knees, the next one would be onto your toes. Your toes on there. And then chest all the way to the floor. Okay, if you have any specific questions about what a high interval training workout is, send us a note. There's, there's, no, there's no end to the amount of permutations that you can do with this. If you get really good at those burpees and the burpee jumps, grab some five, 10 pound weights. If you get really good with the air squats, it's just like holding, you can just now hold on to a 10 pound weight and do your squats like this. If you get really good for 20 seconds, go to 45 seconds. If you get done with 12 minutes, go to, go to 20 minutes. Uh, anything else to add here, Larissa? Thanks for watching today, guys. You cannot just uh, expect uh, one change in, in your life. So if you're just gonna be changing your diet, it's gonna be really, really hard for you to make major, major changes if you're not changing your exercise routine. If you're just changing your exercise routine, not changing how you feel your body, feel your mind, it's also really, really difficult. We talk about thoughts, traumas, and toxins in our office here. Those are the three stresses of the body. Thoughts, mental, emotional, relationship, financial, work, infant, stress. <laughs> Traumas, how you move your body, how you don't move your body. Not moving your body is a stress to it. And toxins, what you eat, what you drink, what you swallow, what you breathe. You have to have a combination of thoughts, traumas, and toxins in the wrong directions for your body to be functioning wrong. And if you're doing those thoughts, traumas, toxins in the right direction, your health should, should, always be moving in the right direction. The one piece about this that maybe people forget to talk about is your nervous system. As a chiropractor, my job is to find those accumulation of stresses. When those accumulation of stresses build up, cause these things called subluxations, my body is to find that misalignment, put it back in place, and then talk to you about these things like exercise and nutrition and diet and thinking and moving your body properly to make sure that your adjustments hold and that your body continues to evolve in the way that you want it to. All right, guys, have a great day. Thanks for watching.